Welcome friends and greetings as several cultures in the world begin their new year. In this special feature, welcome to a conversation with Eni Lastari, who is the chairperson of International Migrants Alliance, which is the first ever global alliance of organizations of grassroots migrants, refugees and displaced peoples. Learn more about International Migrants Alliance at www.vrmigrants.net. Eni Lestari was one of the key participants at the Breaking Grounds, Taking Roots, the Istanbul Principles at 7, a potentially game-changing meeting of hundreds of civil society champions from around the world, along with some government representatives, among others, which happened recently in Bangkok, Thailand. Eni Lestari was in conversation with CNS Managing Editor Shobha Shukla. Without any further ado, let's listen to Eni Lestari of International Migrants Alliance. Why is it important to develop CSO spaces for achieving Agenda 2030? How could uh, any government, even the UN institution, could achieve any development without participation of the people in different sectors in different countries? And uh, that also will ensure what kind of development that the world is trying to create. And uh, in what ways have the uh, Istanbul principles been helpful in creating these spaces so that CSOs can act as development partners yeah. effectively? Uh, the Istanbul principle has been an instrument for the CSO to assert more space within the government and private talk. Uh, in the past, it used to be very exclusive, elitist talk. The people are only an audiences. But this time, after the Istanbul principle, at least then, uh, although still quite limited space, we can say what we need to say as a unity of uh, CSO from different contingent. So the Istanbul principle uh, is, is an, uh, a pathway for the CSO to step one way forward. But the question now is how we are going to expand our space, what we have achieved so far, and at the same time facing the bigger challenges as a crisis and the whole um, shrinking of space for the CSO that everyone is facing. Have the Istanbul principles been helpful in the past seven years for developing CSO spaces so that they can effectively work as development actors? Coming from a migrant constituency within the CPDA network, uh, it is the newest uh, constituency ex accepted and established last year in Nairobi. And uh, as a new constituency, um, we try to um, mobilize and involve as many as migrant immigrant refugee groups within the development talk. Because again, we are people who are marginalized within our country, displaced outside the country, yet another marginalized outside the country. So you can expect that there is almost no access for us to engage, even to know, and yet to voice out. So uh, when we were accepted in the CPDA, then we at once were recognized by different constituency that the migrants can speak for themselves. You know, you, there is no need to represent them in the global arena. And beyond that, then we spoke at the GPEDC to represent our voices because part of the talk, although it is quite briefly, was the recognition of the remittances of the migrants across the world that has been instrumental into development talk. So then uh, that actually an, an open door for us. Okay, now we can say what we need to say, but the question is we really have to organize ourselves into more solid voice if we want to against government in the more effective way. What have been the challenges we have confronted in implementing the Istanbul principles over the last seven years and how to overcome the them? The biggest challenge is that in the context of migration, we are facing the huge uh, dilemma mm. in even gathering and uniting this constituency because one, uh, many of them are also facing stricter uh, immigration policies everywhere. Second, that they also face very harsh employment conditions that does not allow them to go out to take leave 
for meeting and most of us are not even NGO in the first place right if you want to involve the real voices you like it or not you have to really involve the grassroots people and that is really the biggest challenge how you are going to uh, listen to them when they cannot even go out attend conferences and even if they can now with so many visa ban from Europe to US many countries are not even allowed to travel you know so that become our biggest biggest uh, issue another one is the sustainability of our organization because people are staying very short now many countries do not accept um, permanent migration anymore even refugee who used to settle down now are facing massive deportation everywhere across the world so practically that actually shake our own foundation as an institution and that going to be our biggest challenge how we are going to include their voices if they are mobile so that's what we are trying to what think according of. to you is the way forward how to deal with it? well the way forward is really to strengthen ourselves you know in whatever condition despite those realities if we want to not lose our space we have to be present we have to unite our issues so some people have to really do extra work in terms of going around talking to people outreaching and uh, gathering their issues and putting it together and then present it to the government and i think in our part through the constituency we are trying to train more people to be able to be the leader and the voice for people who cannot even speak out yeah, that is important to, to yeah. make them to better their capacity as yes. in leadership. And we have to show that we can speak development. We actually organize people coming from different backgrounds. Some do not enjoy education, low education. Very few are in the at least proper education. And the number of migration today has reached more than 300 million. You know, and that is bigger than my own country, which is for largest nation in the world. So practically, our challenge is now, despite these realities, how you are going to bring them into one step forward to continue, you know, to to assert their rights despite whatever limitation they have. Civil society space shrinking, and how can Istanbul principles be helpful and useful in helping safeguard this civil society space? Well, the CSO space has was not available in the past. You know, I mean, there was like little, you know, space. But le later part, then through the IP, there was this process of mediation. Uh, but now, if you see in different countries and sectoral, uh, and space for engagement is very limited. Um, that many government prefer to talk to either private. To make things easy for them second they only talk to what they call it an export of issue which is not not you know it's not bad but it's not everything for example in the talk of migration they tend to talk to the ingo mm -hmm. but they don't talk to my refugee they don't talk to um, asylum seeker they don't talk to immigrants they don't talk to deported migrants and that is quite something because then it reflects how the policy was made. Then the question is, what kind of policy you are creating if you don't talk to people who will be most affected by the policies? And that is our biggest concern. Mm -hmm. Because again, we do not want to repeat what has been done in the past, which is talking without us. Now, talk to us, and then we tell you everything that we, we know and we experience and that we want. And I think this kind of space is quite delicate because in the migration context, government tend not to because it's quite political as an issue, very fragile, very sensitive, and they don't want to be criticized in the public hotspot. So the tendency is don't invite them. So that's why through the IP, we have to really expand the space. Uh, we are so lucky to be here because then we can have another channel to go inside without, you know, um, gov uh, government or private denied our presence simply because we are the most fragile and you know like a conflicted uh, constituency in the eyes of the government and private uh, IP has been seven years as for now and I think it's time for us to assess really how much we have achieved but beyond that uh, we have to prepare ourselves for uh, bigger challenges coming forward despite the SDG in 2030 
we know exactly the world is not going the way we want to be because crisis is not getting better anywhere. Uh, treatment of uh, states, private, is getting harsh everywhere. You see land grabbing, um, you know, disaster everywhere. War is getting intense, and that actually shows us something that um, the business is still taking lead in the whole development project and that's quite worrying because how many more millions people have to be displaced for the sake of this kind of um, you know uh, greediness and I think as a CSO we have to take more firm uh, commitment and um, stance uh, to some extent that we have to really confront government private to make sure that they will rethink and reevaluate and s to some extent listen and this is the most difficult part the listen part is the most difficult part because they can talk they can talk to you but doesn't mean they will listen to you yeah yeah and that when i think governments do believe in inside inwardly that without migrants many of the economies may collapse it, it will collapse you know we are more than we are 3.2 percent of the world working forces and can you name a country that can stand alone uh, in this globalized city or a country without the contribution of migrants you know despite what trump has done to the undocumented immigrants community uh, u.s has been benefited uh, the longest decades they can even remember from the sweat and the sacrifice of the immigrants so i think uh, but the the fact that Trump is continuing with this kind of terror, you know, arrest, deportation, it shows that the businesses now is in the side of desperation of saving the profit and kicking out those people whom they think would be their future problem. So I think this is where the space of migrants in the eyes of government that we are no longer being a workforce, but we are the threat of their own economic stability. You are listening to Eni Lastari, who is the chairperson of International Migrants Alliance and was one of the key participants at the Breaking Grounds, Taking Roots, the Istanbul Principles at 7 meeting. She was in conversation with CNS Managing Editor Shobha Shukla. For more details, be welcome to check out the website of CSO Partnership for Development Effectiveness or CPDE at www.csopartnership.com dot org thanks for listening and stay tuned